Hey guys, so today I have swatches of the Essie Originals Remixed Collection. I found these on Amazon. There are six polishes here all together and they seem to be, well, like the name of the collection says, like slightly remixed versions of some of their classic shades. So there are six polishes here all together. As far as I know, these are only available on Amazon, but if you wait a little while, they should pop up other places as well. And I will get into the swatches. So I've already filmed the intro for this video because I've already done the photos, but I have some information that didn't make it into the intro. Apparently there's also going to be a re-released collection in limited edition bottles of all of the polishes that the polishes in this remix collection were inspired by. I have not found those or seen those anywhere and I actually only have two of the original colors that the polishes in this collection were inspired by, so I might pick that up. Uh, I don't really know. I feel like if I'm going to have it, it should have gone in this video, but I also don't want to wait until that comes out since it's just existing polishes in special bottles, so I don't know. We'll play that one by ear. The first polish is Ballet Sneakers, which is supposed to be a play on ballet slippers. Now, I pulled out my bottle of ballet slippers, and uh, I feel like I remember it being a lot more pink than this. I don't know if I'm remembering wrong or if it's just extremely faded, but it, this is this very, very milky um, off-white shade, where Ballet Sneakers is this nice pale baby pink. Now, this one is a bit streaky on that first coat. The polish itself also dries to a kind of semi-matte, soft matte finish. And pretty good formula on this one. It doesn't feel thin, but it do I do feel like I'm getting like a ton of polish on the nail when I don't really mean to. That's probably just me though. Yeah, hopefully you can kind of see where the polish has kind of run. On my pointer finger here, the polish has run down to the sides of the nail. It's, it's a little bit more opaque down here on the sides and a little bit thinner on the top than it was when I first applied it. So it's definitely moving on me a little bit since it's a little bit runny. So this one does start to build up in two coats. It's still going to be pretty streaky though. I needed three for my swatch photos and even then I wasn't sold on that third coat. You can see that semi-matte finish that it does have. So this one covers mostly completely in that third coat. You can see you get a much like brighter, lighter color out of it. There are still some streaks. I'm going very, very carefully and really trying to float my brush over the top of this so I don't create any streaks. But once this dries down completely, there are still gonna be some, but I just, I won't do more than three coats. Won't do it. So here is the third coat of ballet sneakers after five minutes of dry time. I feel like with each successive coat of this polish, it takes longer and longer to dry. And I know that like dry time is very heavily dependent on your environment as well, but this just seems to like really not wanna get fully down to that matte finish very well. So this is after five minutes, you can see how much shine is still here, how slowly it's drying. So that is three coats of ballet sneakers. So the next polish, and I forgot to mention, the stickers, little SE label stickers on the side of these, each have kind of their own graphic for the polish, and then also on the cap as well. I always take those stickers off of my SE bottles. I don't know, I have a problem with stickers on things. Like if it's not the explicit label of the polish, which like for some reason in my mind, the normal sticker that's on the side of an SE bottle like doesn't belong there, so it has to come off as soon as they get to me. I'm super weird about stickers, but I think I'll actually keep these ones on because they are specific to each color. So the next polish is Like a Rebel. This is inspired by Ladylike, which I do not own. Thought I did, but don't, at least according to my spreadsheet. This is a really interesting kind of rosy pink, but it is packed with gold and silver micro flakes, which give it this really shiny, almost like foil metallic appearance. So this is a bit sheer on that first coat. There is some color to that base, but it's very close to my skin tone and it is very sheer. So in the first coat, it just looks like we're getting those flakes out, but they are very metallic and a good formula on this one as well. So this one does start to build up on that second coat. On the first nail there, I can see some nail line at one angle and then I see no nail line at the next angle. I'm probably gonna be good here with two. I'm not... If you're feeling super picky, you might need three, but I don't think it's very likely. And this does dry smooth. None of those flakies or that metallic shine that's in there has any texture to it. So that is two coats of Like a Rebel. 
The next palette is called Satin Slip, which is inspired by or remixed. It's Angora Cardi, but remixed. And Angora Cardi is another older Essie polish that I actually don't have. Another one that I thought I had, but I don't. This is a like dusty, rosy, pinkish red jelly polish. So you can see that this is very transparent because it is a jelly. Fairly even though. So it's definitely going to take a couple of coats to build up. And good formula on this one. So this one does start to build up on that second coat. I can still see a bit of my nail line, so we're gonna do a third. You can see the color does build up nicely. This is not a shade that I would have ever thought I would like in a jelly, but I actually really like it. And since this is a jelly, it will dry pretty shiny, uh, but we're top coat anyway. So this one does deepen a bit more on that third coat. If I do look closely, I can still see my nail line after that third coat. It's not super obvious, but it is there. If you have a much whiter nail line, that's gonna stand out a lot more. So that is three coats of Satin Slip. So the next polish is called Below Zero, and this is the remixed version of Smokin' Hot, which I also do not have. That's one I didn't think I had either. There's a couple that I'm surprised I don't have in there. This one I knew I didn't have. So this is a dusty, kind of like leaning a little bit taupey purple, I might be making that up, with a very metallic blue shimmer to it. So this one is a little bit sheer on that first coat, but not bad. You can see that shimmer is nice and strong. There are some brush strokes through it when it's wet. There's also a little bit larger of a particle. It's not a glitter. You can really see it on that nail. It's not a glitter, but it's just a little bit larger than the other shimmer that's in there. So it has a little bit of sparkle to it as well. And good formula on this one. So this one does cover completely in two coats. Those brush strokes that were there when it's wet are almost completely gone now that it's dried. And overall, I feel like this almost looks a little bit darker on the nail than it looks in the bottle. Just a smidgen. So that is two coats of Below Zero. The next polish is called Wicked Fierce, and this is the remixed version of Wicked. Now, Wicked is a very, very, very dark, almost black, like oxblood shade. I uh, really thought, I mean, I have Wicked. My spreadsheet tells me that I have it, but I've been through all my SC drawers, like, three times, and I cannot find it. So it's either lost or I overlooked it. It's more likely that I overlooked it than it is that I lost it, but I can't find it. Not that it matters, because you're never going to look at this and think that this looks exactly like Wicked and not be able to tell them apart, but it still bothers me that I can't find it. So this is a really weird, <laughs> it's like a multi-chrome metallic polish. It goes from this burgundy to this kind of goldy green that you can see over in the corners here. And then the polish itself seems to be in a little bit of a, a brownish jelly base, but there's a ton of that multi-chrome shifty pigment in there, so it makes up the majority of the polish. Super opaque with this one. Totally good in one coat. There are some brush strokes through that metallic pigment when this is wet. You also don't get a ton of that shift that you see in the bottle on the nail. It's majority of it is just that burgundy shade. So hopefully you can see as it dried, those brush strokes did smooth out and calm down a bit. So that is one coat of Wicked Fierce. The next polish is called Berry Nice, and this is the remixed version of Berry Naughty, which I also don't have. This is a very, very dark pink metallic. I see it as a pink. It's bordering on red, but I see pink when I look at it. It has a bit of a pink shimmer to it as well that also has a gold shift depending on what angle you're looking at it from. So this one is very bright, a little bit sheer on that first coat. It's also very sparkly with that shimmer that's in there. The formula is good on this one. That gold shift that's in the shimmer is pretty hard to pick out on the nails, much easier to see in the bottle. So this one does cover completely in two coats. You can see that color gets much darker. And that shimmer stands out a lot nicer against that darker base as well. So that is two coats of Berry Nice. So I really liked Like a Rebel. The sparkle that's in there, like the little tiny gold flake that's in there is so bright and so reflective and there's a lot of it. I feel like usually when you get a polish like this, it's very sparse and doesn't stand out that much, but there's like a lot in here. It looks really good on the nails and this is a good like transitional 
winter to spring kind of neutral shade for this time of year as well. So that is the Essie Originals Remixed Collection. Again, I found those on Amazon, but if you wait a little while, you can probably find them somewhere like 88 Beauty. Head to Toe Beauty has actually not had a new Essie collection in a really long time, so 88 has been my go-to, and I like going there because then I'm not paying full price where they are $9 on Amazon. So that's where I found them, but I think they'll be other places relatively soon. So I hope you guys enjoyed this one, and I will talk to you later. Bye.